Yes. Well, hello and welcome. Uh, I think this is going to be utter chaos, <laughs> and I can't wait. I, uh, I actually have been playing the regular playthrough. I've been trying to be good. I couldn't stick to being good, so now we're going to see if I can be completely evil. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Though I do absolutely love the music in this. Oh, wait. Hmm. I'll just go normal for now. <laughs> The, uh, the hard one seems a little, uh, too daunting for me at the moment. Twelve dreams for the Red Queen under crown of stone. Eight voracious beasts born from eight restless nights. Four nails piercing the flesh of the sinner. One prayer for the summoned called by this song. Tis perhaps the countdown to oblivion for the once proud city of London. Tis perchance her inhabitants' last dance alone to face death and pestilence. Confronted by the eerie and unknown, mortals became desperate for answers. A flock's flight makes for an omen, the falling of a star, a dire presage. Turning to priests for interpretation when there was no reason to be found. When religion failed, men turned to science. I saw them build such vain cities, crafting machines made for endless war. New questions flourished as old answers withered. What is darkness but lurking sun? What is wall but enslaved stone? What is glass but tortured sand? What is song but a call to arms? What is hate but jilted love? What is life but death? Pending. Damn. <laughs> Reconsidering my whole existence after Death. that. <laughs> Since the apple was plucked from the sacred tree, mortality was believed to be God's punishment. A righteous snare to keep mankind from ascending to the stars. They were all so wrong. Death is not a wicked thing, nor some holy retribution. A true punishment would be to never know its sweet kiss. Awaken from the harshness and be born once more. Up there, buddy. Oh, I forget how slow you are at this part. Thirsty. 
Ah. Here it comes. Mouth movement. <laughs> no! Please, a moment, let me explain! These patrols are after me! No! No! Don't shoot! I didn't just suck the life out of my sister. <laughs> this is a nightmare! I need to get out of here! This can't be happening! I really love the look of this game though. It's really cool. And the music no, is wonderful. Please! Stop! I mean you no harm! I gotta find someone else to suck their blood too! What's going on? Oh, Mary. What have I done? What's all this about? Shit, no. I can defend myself. Kill that thing! Over there! Who are you? Oh, I don't have that ability yet. Stay back! <laughs> Sorry, but you left me no choice. I need help. Die, you fucking leech! <laughs> Please, listen to me. I, I can't make any sense of this. Shut up, beast! Who are you? W what is this all about? Ah! Ah! What in God's sake? I'll do the rest ah! of the job. Ah! Ah! Just, just leave me! Ah! 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 <clears throat> the sun. It feels like it's burning me to the bone. Hmm, okay, okay. I need to find somewhere to hide. Stop right now! Let me go! Ah! 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 
I need to find shelter. Is anybody there? What is this place? Mm, looks uh, extra musty. <laughs> well, I guess it is abandoned, so that makes sense. The place seems abandoned. I should be safe enough here. See. Wait. This one's dressed up fancy. Let's run through his pockets. Picking the dead's pockets? Are you serious? I've still a rent to pay. He's got no more responsibilities. What's this? Go watch. Beautiful it is. We fancy it and share the takings. <laughs> I suppose we are undertakers. <laughs> now, give him an eve. That's impossible. It's impossible. Their mouths weren't moving, but they were talking. Wild. I don't know, maybe that's just a side effect of when you're a vampire and nobody's mouth moves. much to accomplish. Yeah, I gotta suck the blood out of still everyone. Have so much left that needs doing. lost. We need to leave. And now! No. There's time. I can save him. That's the enemy coming! The orders are to evacuate the hospital! <sighs> Done. He'll live. And now what? We fight. Killing is a hell of a lot easier than healing. True. <laughs> Well, no, depends. It never got easy. Uh. Hmm. I will save this for later. This makes no sense. None of it. No sense at all. It's a nightmare. That's it. And that 
was the end of the game. Beautiful. Man, could you imagine if it just ended like that? <laughs> like five minutes of gameplay. That kind of be baller, not gonna lie. This is absolute madness. I've lost touch with the real. Madness is as mad as the moon. Contains blinding sunlight into a glowing flesh. Oh. The vampire uses the power of his blood to heal normal and aggravated damage, increasing his flesh, nerve, and bone regeneration. With time, this vampiric, vampiric <laughs> ability can be extremely powerful and is sure to surprise any unwary vampire hunter. Okay. I really like the image for that. It's pretty dope. Uh, oh, okay. Uh... I'll do that one. Okay. Uh sweet. That voice in my head. If I'm not mad, then it must belong to the one who made me. Eternal thirst. <laughs> Night is here again. I am in London now. Somewhere near the East End docks, I suppose. I don't know this part of town. All I know is this. Someone is killing people here. Murdering them. Butchering them. Drinking their blood. Making them like him. Is this what happened to me? My poor Mary, my poor sister, I must follow the blood trail, find answers. Maybe I should start by gathering information about what happened to this place while I was away. Then I will find who did this to me, who made me what I am now. <laughs> Pretty I dark am. there, brother. <laughs> I must find him to understand what I have become. Where is it? It's closed. Uh -huh. These people want me dead. I need to leave now. I'll come back for them later. <laughs> Here's the leech. Here! Shit. <laughs> My head's spinning. I cannot no. enter. Uh, thank you. Ah, yes, my stun. I'm still in Southwark. I must reach the West End. Oh, my favorite part of the stunning. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to skip that. It's too bad. Strength. Strength I never knew I had. Damn that. Oh my god. <laughs> what? What the fuck? <laughs> Uh, that was great. Uh, let's see. It's dead, all right. 
of my body. That's exactly what you are, sir. <laughs> you are now a blood-sucking man-child. <laughs> true we're in a epidemic question mark my poor sister if only I had controlled my need for blood Mary someone will pay for what happened to you for what happened to us Dizziness from the jump. I can now control it. Oh shit. Lakeland. I will. Oh, that's the best part. I can't believe I'm <laughs> doing this. What will London have to say to me? Uh, that you're a leech. <laughs> Pretty it's much all they refer to you as. I've so many questions unanswered. <laughs> kind of true, though. <laughs> Another corpse. Have the very streets of London become a mausoleum? Man has been drained of all blood, but I can still smell the scent of it. I follow the scent's trail. Perhaps it will lead me to my assailant. Ah, yes, the scent. Fresh blood. And the smell is so strong. <laughs> Where has everyone gone? that I stay in these musty, musty, musty places. <laughs> uh, let's see. I need maximum blood. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, I don't even have enough. I always see those and think there's going to be something valuable in there, and then I remember it's just ammo refill. <laughs> At last, a little life. Oh, God, sir, you look like Jonah's whale just spat you out of hell. Can I get you a drink? No, thank you. I'm not 
not thirsty. Well, grab a chair and get some rest. This is going to be another long night. Why is it going to be a long night? You must be new around here. Don't you know about the murders? Tell me more about these murders. Every morning for the last few weeks, bodies have been found. And those poor sods didn't die of flu. Do the police mm, have any leads on a suspect? Ah, even before the outbreak, coppers never came round here. We're on our own. People die in these parts all the time, and no one cares. Where am I? Where is this place? You're at my bar, sir, the turquoise turtle. The last ray of light in this dangerous part of town. Aren't you scared? Scared of what? All the bad shit happens out on the foggy streets. <laughs> and I never go outside. So you're open all night? <laughs> <Same>. Yep. <laughs> Figured people might need a place to rest in these dark times. I'm looking for someone who might have passed through here recently. Wondered if you might help. It's been quiet tonight. The only other person I've seen went straight up to his room. <laughs> Thought it was kind of rude, actually. You mean he's still here? Well, yeah. He paid for the entire week. How long has he been here? He rented the room a few days ago and didn't say when he'd leave. Who is this man? What does he look like? Well, like a gentleman, I guess. Well-dressed, quite polite. A professor or something fancy like that. Always writing, reading notes. I need to okay. meet this man. I have questions. Just climb the stairs and knock on the first door. I heard him open his window, so I guess he's still awake. And, sir, uh, yes? no funny business, you hear me? This is a respectable establishment. Good evening, sir. I wondered if I could ask for your help. Wow, you look like you need a drink. Yes. I apologize for my outfit. It's I been, do, but not alcohol. It's been a long night. Been there, seen that. Don't worry, things can only get worse. Has anybody entered the bar recently? Can't say. Sorry. I spent the night making love to that gorgeous bowl, see? This is important, sir. Are you sure no one has come in here in the last few hours? I don't know and I don't care. This is a free country. People still have the right to come and go, don't they? No, What's they going don't. on around here? It's like everybody is hiding. You must be new here. Have you not heard about the murders? Everybody fears the return of the sewer dog. Who is this sewer dog? It's a local bogeyman. Convenient answer for every crime that happened for decades. You murdered someone, blamed a sewer dog, eh? You make it sound like it's a fairy tale. People will always believe in monsters. It's easier than accepting their own darkness. We can all be monsters. I'll leave you to your bottle then. <laughs> Hello, sir. Are you all right? Is there any way I can help you? I don't know. Maybe you could just talk to me. Maybe you prefer to speak with Tom then. He's more agreeable talking to strangers. What's going on around here? Where is everyone? Too many dead, sir. First the epidemic, and now all these terrible murders. The murders? What can you say about them? Bodies found in the streets every morning. Drained of blood. It's just horrible. Some say the sewer dog is back. The sewer dog? What's that? No one knows. People have always disappeared around these parts. The ancients say it's the sewer dog coming out to feed. But now he's killing in the streets. What have you heard about the epidemic? There's a Spanish flu. Yeah, killed so many last summer. Thought we'd seen the last of it. Dozens dying every week. Are the authorities doing anything? Nothing. There are so many quarantine zones in London now. It's gotten really hard to travel across town. Oof. <laughs> what is this place? This is Tom's bar. A turquoise turtle. I'm the barmaid here, Sabrina, if you want to know. You don't seem to have much business. 
Where is everybody? Well, most people are sleeping right now. And those that are awake tend to avoid going out. What with the murders and all. Are you always open this late at night? No, it's only since the epidemic started. Tom thought that people may need a safe place to stay. I just want to talk. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm not afraid, sir. It's just I've other customers to take care of. I only see one customer. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. I mean, I'll best check on them. I'll leave then. Thank you. Hmm. Alright, I'll be back to, to suck you guys dry your blood later. <laughs> uh, I'll it's up. Oh, yes, yes. This is no place for you. Prewen has several patrols roaming the area. They do not pursue me. But they're looking for vampires, and they're most efficient. They'll not relent until the killer has been identified. I have a common objective, but I require... I think someone is eavesdropping. You might as well come in, whoever you are. Slowly, vampire. <clears throat> Who are you? I, I mean you no harm. Say it, the vampire. Present yourself. I... I need a word. With... <sighs> Anyone. Oh. Oh. Well, that's something I can do for you. Who might you be? Uh, <laughs> you first. <Tell> me, <laughs> who are you? First, tell me what you want. Then I may tell you. That's none of your concern. Sir, you have entered my room in the middle of the night, pale as a corpse and shaking like a tree. <laughs> so please, indulge me. Something... Someone is molesting people. In fact, killing them. Biting them. The calling card of a vampire. Like you. You seem the expert. How would that be? I have my secrets, as you have yours. Then if you are not a vampire, who or what are you? Dr. Edgar Swansea of the Brotherhood of St. Paul. I am performing an independent investigation here in an attempt to understand precisely what is going on. What have you uncovered concerning the murders? It started a few nights ago. Rumors of violent murders. The docks have always been, shall we say, somewhat unsavory. But this is different. How different? A vampire is at work here. Famished. Reckless. It must be brought to ground, and quickly. I heard another voice, that of a woman. Who were you talking to? Ridiculous. I have no idea what you're talking about. Something tells me not to trust you. Then the feeling is Actual mutual. Actual little sus there, doctor. <laughs> and what exactly is this brotherhood? Sir, if the name is not familiar to you, then we shall discuss it another time. Then help me find the culprit. I may. If you'll first tell me why you opened this door. I followed a trail. The scent of blood from a recent victim. It led me here. You thought I was your aggressor. That explains a great deal. We are both chasing the same shadow. A shadow, yes. indeed. Yet I heard his voice in my head. There was a moment I believed I was mad. You should let me handle this affair. You've no idea what you're up against. No. I will find the monster. 
He is mine. How will you do any better than I? But then let me ask you this. What are your intentions if you find the killer? Hmm. I'll end I'll them. End it. <laughs> hmm. Then I can only wish you good hunting. And pray we shall meet again. Fuck. <laughs> If Swansea is not my attacker, it means somebody else came here tonight. Evening, sir. Can I help you? I have a few questions for you. Well, if you must. <laughs> she was so upset about that, damn. I spoke to Dr. Swansea. He's not the man I'm looking for. Now, I want the truth. The truth? What do you mean? I suspect that someone else was here tonight. And I don't think Tom wants to tell me about it. I'm just the barmaid here, okay? If Tom says you're the only visitor we had, then you're the only visitor we had. I can feel your fear, madam. Please, tell me what's going on. <sighs> it's Will. William Bishop. He came in here earlier tonight and he... Well, I thought he was going to clock someone. What happened tonight? I he was dead drunk, as usual. But my God, is. His, his eyes, his face. He must have caught something awful. He shouted and, and cried. It was terrible. Why are you so afraid? I mean, his skin, his hands. I scrubbed every glass and his every chair that he touched. God, I hope it's not contagious. Tell me about this William Bishop. Will was a sailor who worked at the canning factory before he lost that job. A nice bloke, really. He's never been violent. Until tonight. Why keep it a secret? Why not tell me about it? Tom's nothing if not loyal. After Will lost his job, he offered him one ear. They used to be good mates. But recently, well... Will started to get very aggressive. I see. Thank you for your candor. I'll be sure to talk to Tom. I'm gonna talk to him. <laughs> ah, yes. Good old citizen hints. As a vampire, you need human blood to evolve. The blood quality bar indicates the XP you'll earn if you feed on the citizen. Unlocked hints increase the amount of XP. <laughs> well, looks like I got a bit left to go. Looks like he has uh, some pretty decent blood, though. Okay. Hello, sir. May I disturb you again? And you're still ugly as sin. I'll leave you to your bottle. Okay, you don't got another for me. Welcome back. Did you find what you were after? I can't say I have. Are you sure no one else came into your bar before I arrived? Hey, I told you, you were the only other stranger I've had. As a vampire, you can force a citizen to reveal information thanks to a hint that you discovered. <laughs> okay. Tom, talk to me about the visit from your old friend, William. Yes, Will came by tonight, but he's not my friend anymore. Why lie to me if he is not your friend? I didn't lie. I said you were my only unannounced customer, and that's the truth. Who is he? William. Just an old sailor who loves his gin too much. He worked for years at the canning factory before it closed. Is he dangerous? Yeah. Like many drunks, he's all bark and no bite. He can barely stand up most of the time. How was he tonight? Was he different? Oh, sicker than usual, perhaps. He whined and mumbled about how mean people were to him and how he'd like to talk to me outside, and then he left when I refused. I need to find him. It's a matter of urgency. Do you know where he is? You could try his boat. It's up by the North Pier. He sleeps there when he's too drunk to get home. Please describe him to me. What do you expect? He's a tall, sick bastard with a bad rash and torn old clothes. William used to be mm. strong. Now he's a mess. Thank you, Tom. If you see him, tell him I don't want him back here unless he cleans up his act, okay? All right. 
to the boats. This way? Yes. Wait. This way. <laughs> I will get to the bottom of this intrigue. What's been done to me? To this city? The body is still warm. This man has just been drained of blood. Yeah, it looks pretty fresh to me. This man was armed. <laughs> he tried to defend himself. Damn. Yeah, as I got messed up really bad. <laughs> What's this? Rip buddy. Some sort of note. This corpse has been dried of its blood, just like the previous victim. Blood and empty gin bottles. This bishop fellow is something of a heavy drinker. There are blood splats on the other side of the canal. I must reach that barge. No. Too many people around here. Oh shit, <laughs> I'm still alive. I can't help it, I got excited when I could suck someone's blood. <laughs> Man, that really gets everywhere. <laughs> enemy card. Press L3 to spot enemies around and display their enemy cards. Okay. Resistances. Some enemies are more resistant to certain types of damage. There are four types of resistances. Physical, there's melee and range, and then powers are blood and shadow. Orange indicates a medium resistance. Red indicates a high resistance. Alright, alright. Thank you. Range weapons. Equip and press triangle to use your range weapons and inflict both standard damage and stun damage. Be aware that your ammo is limited. Okay. Might just go uh, a run without using any guns. <laughs> See how that goes. Get a oh, weapons shit. ready! We found one! What the? I don't know what that was! There's one of them burning! Watch it! It's a killer! Oh Christ! Oh! Not the first time I've been shot, sir. That's a lot of blood. Oh! <laughs> that's, uh... That's nice. <laughs> Rats and hideouts. Rats are often located near hideouts using senses. L3 will help you to locate them more easily. This is despicable. <laughs> I would agree. The noise he makes, too. Like, just... Like, <laughs> Uh, truly a rabbit animal. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, I only have 415, so I might be able to get like one other skill. Uh, hard biting. I like all the different like abilities and stuff you can get though. It's pretty cool. Uh, I think that is it. Yes. Let's 
Oopsie, turn it around. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I didn't expect the one hit him, but that's cool. Fresh blood. The whole building reeks of it. The scent is so strong it makes me dizzy. Oh god. <laughs> Oh, two-handed weapons. Equip a two-handed weapon and press triangle to use a special ability. The scythe, for instance, can be used to parry an incoming attack, inflicting heavy stun damage if timed correctly. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Ah, good old machete. <laughs> Bloodshed. Uh, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of bodies just chilling around here. Oh my god. Oh dear god, not again. William, please stop. This creature is bedeviled. Uh, I must put it down. Fuck. Oh, I'm not ready for that yet. Quickly, your like stamina runs out. <laughs> Damn. Hello, sir. William was an honorable man. I could have saved him. Mr. Hampton, are you in there? We knew him well. Another lost soul, a kindred spirit. Sir, listen to the sound of my voice. I am. I am a doctor. You're suffering from shock. I must return to my flock. They'll stray without me. Oh. I thought I killed you. <laughs> Remember, certain skulls are every bit as resistant as we are. Who okay. are you? Fair. What do you mean by skull? You truly are a newborn. I should have realized... Wait. You, you are the woman from the bar. Are you... like me? Can you help me? I believe, sir, I already have. Uh. By George and the Saints, you've solved the mystery of these terrible murders. <laughs> what the fuck? Where did you come from? <laughs> Patience, good fellows, I've come to offer help. Just give me a moment to secure my boat. We can leave this awful place. William was not the evil man they claimed. He was just taken by the thirst. He needed his drink. This man requires medical attention. We'll see he gets to the nearest hospital. No, please. I almost tend to my fold. My flock needs me. Yes, sir. Go with a good Dr. Swansea. He's resourceful, and I'm sure he'll take good care of you. You'd best come as well. The sun is soon to rise, and you'll need a place to rest. I just need a moment. Yeah, and you did shoot about yourself in the William, chest, so... <laughs> I'll be a step closer to understanding what happened to me. This poor creature can't be my maker. Ah, oh, lovely. Could it be some subspecies of vampire? I must find a place to analyze the blood. Alright, can do. Looks like, uh, wait, I saw some over here. Okay, I think that's all there is in here. Oh, 
Man, it's spooky as hell in here, though. There's so many candles up there. <laughs> Like, who actually got up there and put every single one of those candles and lit them? We're on our way Curious. to the Pembroke Hospital. It's just across the canal. They'll have a bed for poor Mr. Hampton. William was... What manner of creature was he? Predator, prey, villain, and victim. Yeah, that can all say. The important thing is that he's been stopped. Duly noted. And the woman? What... Who is she? What woman? No, don't play me for a fool. You used me to locate that skull. You must know who she is. And I thought you were gentlemen. You shouldn't talk about a lady behind her back. But I will tell you, she values her privacy. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're what? Were London as peaceful as she appears from the middle of the canal? If only that were the reality of the situation. To be honest, I've always tried to avoid this part of town. Pembroke Hospital is the last bastion between the rest of London and the epidemic. The flu has decimated the East End and the war still rages. Welcome to the front lines of a plague. This is where you work, Dr. Swansea. I am the administrator of Pembroke Hospital. I thought you were here in service of your mysterious order, the Brotherhood of... Of St. Paul's Stole, yes. But first and foremost, I'm a man of science. A physician, like yourself, Dr. Who, Reed. How do you know who I am? No need for modesty. You are Dr. Jonathan Reed, a surgeon of some caliber and renown, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct, sir. I knew it. <laughs> I had my suspicions. Knew it. But when you took the blood sample from the corpse of poor William, I was certain. Dr. Reed, marvelous. <laughs> Have we met? I attended three of your seminars before the war. I have the utmost admiration for your research. And what a turn of fate. England's most esteemed blood specialist returns to London a vampire. <laughs> that word, again, from a so-called man of science. I understand. Traditionally, the role of science is to refute myth, but when myth walks among us, the Brotherhood of St. Paul has dedicated its purpose to their study. There's so much for you to learn. Of that, you are right. <laughs> well, then let me be blunt. Join my staff at Pembroke Hospital. As a physician. I suspect you'll not find a better post of employment to contemplate your uh, predicament. This is sudden. I was returning home to see my sickly mother. But alas, that was before contracting this affliction. Dr. Reed, take a moment to consider. The post would be for the night shift, providing a good explanation for your absence during daylight hours. You'll be adequately reimbursed and have a place to hide. I even had the forethought to bring some clean clothes. So, no, what I like do you these say? Ones. It seems I have little choice. Yours is a generous offer, so I thank you. Brilliant! Oh, Jonathan, this is one for the book, and the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Dr. Swansea, thank goodness. I was beginning to be concerned. Worry no more, Nurse Crane. For I bring good news. Oh, Doctor, what a night. We lost two more patients. Nurse Scow said she couldn't take it anymore and resigned. Yes, well, I'll make a new rotor in the morning. In the meantime, find a... good bed for Mr. Hampton. Be sure to pay attention to his needs. Of course, Doctor. Oh, and Dorothy? Yes, Doctor? Dr. Reed here has just returned from the front. He served King Country and will be joining us here at Pembroke. We're very lucky to have gained a surgeon of his talent, and one so experienced in blood transfusions. That is good news indeed, Doctor. <laughs> oh, yes. 
Got double the experience now. Pembrook, it's not what we have, but what we haven't. It's only thanks to Nurse Crane and the staff that our ship doesn't sink. If you have any questions, just ask her. Duly noted. Thank you. Your assistance is required, Dr. Swansea, immediately. Welcome aboard, Jonathan. We'll catch up after my rounds. I'm coming, Nurse Crane. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> uh. Okay. Take me to a hospital. <laughs> These names. I've accepted Dr. Swansea's help. I will work at the Pembroke Hospital. I have no choice. The man knows about my condition, about what I've become, a vampire. I can't believe this. I don't know anything about this secluded medical facility. Everybody here will take take me for what I'm not anymore. Jonathan E. Reed, the famous surgeon. I must lie to them all, to the patients, to the staff. This is my new home, where I will hide from all who are after me. Where I will hide from everyone until I get a better understanding of what is going on. Ah, and it'll give me a chance to suck everyone's blood. Uh, well, that was coincidental. <laughs> Each heart contains the strength of life. Drink at this river. Dry it all. <laughs> oh, come on, you bastard. I won't bite. Sir, please. You've lost too much blood. Calm yourself. You think I didn't notice? Stop your staring and get me to an hospital, you ass. No. Insult me again and I'll put an end to your misery right now. All right, all right, sorry. I am in pain here. My guts are spilling out onto the street, and you're yabbering on. Yes. That's a very nasty wound you've got there. Take my word, I was... I am a doctor, Dr. Jonathan Reed. <sighs> Name's Clay Cox. I'd appreciate you helping me to a better place, Doc. Follow me, Mr. Cox. Let me assist you to that better place. Hehehehe. <laughs> Blood quality. The blood quality indicates how how much XP you'll attain from a particular citizen. The higher the blood quality, the more XP you get. Awesome. Mesmerize. To drink the blood of your prey, you first need to mesmerize them to lead them out of sight from others. Your mesmerize level will be equal or higher than the citizen's resistance. Press L1 to mesmerize clay. <laughs> Dance with him the dance of life and death. Blood temptation. Press X to embrace Clay Cox or circle to release him. Embracing Clay will provide a massive XP boost, but be aware that there will be consequences. Learning more about citizens and collecting their hints will increase their experience gained. Well, I gotta do it. <laughs> The fucking music that plays. <laughs> it's great. In the back, you bastard! Didn't have the guts to fart me. Oh, Fuck sorry. you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. <laughs> it's always sus. Like the district will suffer. Uh, how will they suffer? <laughs> I mean, they're going to by my hand, but. <laughs> Okay, now to find the stairs. Ooh, a box. Hurry up! Doctor, where have you been? I've little time to play hide and seek with new staff members, no matter how illustrious they may be. I apologize, nurse. I needed some time to myself. This has been the longest and strangest night of my life. You delivered poor Mr. Hampton from a terrible fate. 
The means to that end should be of little concern, Doctor. Thank you, Nurse. What can I do for you? Dr. Swansea insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Thank you. Nurse Crane, isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. I would like to ask a few questions first. Uh... What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. <laughs> Apologies, uh... I've only just met him the once. Well, <laughs> this is sudden. I've only just returned to England. Dr. Swansea is a brilliant surgeon and the most compassionate physician. Oh yeah, what's up? It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough, and better than me. The administrator has better things to do than mix with us. And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in. How does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. The thing that's tripped me out is like how much blood she just has on her hands. Like, uh, <laughs> it's a little, little sus. If you could point me Kinda in the nasty. direction of my room again, nurse. Second floor. I guess not for him though. Left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. Thank you, Nurse Crane. So weird. Oh nice, what are you planning on streaming? Uh... Good evening, sir. Pink. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks, the ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot I mean... during the war, and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? And why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know. And by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. You're selling guns to civilians. You keep people alive your own way, Doctor. I offer them another way to protect their health. That's fair. How is the situation around here? You want to hear the situation is alright? It's fucking awful. We lack everything. And it's getting worse every day. So what do you do exactly in this hospital? Apart from smuggling guns, I mean. I've been an ambulance driver since... too long, I guess. I'll bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done. Most of the time. <laughs> since you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this vicinity? It's a complete disaster. It's even getting <laughs> dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Even the locals attack you. Yikes. It sounds like things have been a bit rough recently. What's happened? Yesterday I got attacked by the patient I was bringing in. I escaped through the hospital's garden, but I lost my wallet when I was running. You left an infected patient outside the hospital. That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself if you want, but be careful, doctor. I'd rather not bring your dead body back. Hmm. I'll have to check this out. <laughs> I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. A reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Ah, yes. Oh my god, I only got the money for that. <laughs> Good evening, nurse. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon here at the Pembroke. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Did he really? It's a good thing I wasn't hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff have already read about your new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. 
I see. Well, I'm a little surprised. Well, she's not even looking at me. I suppose I'll just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know, blood transfusions are Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. He is convinced it is the future. How are things here? <laughs> Not good, to say the least. <laughs> Can't get over her We're side struggling eyes. against an invisible enemy, more lethal than any bullet from a gun. It's hard, Doctor. An invisible enemy? Quite a poetic term for a disease, especially from a nurse. Sorry, Doctor. These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here. And we're trying to hold fast, but how do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses have already resigned. <laughs> oh. I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them? Is there a problem I should know about, nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Is there anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tibbets. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Why should his age <laughs> be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. <laughs> Her face, she looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you okay, man? Are you okay? <laughs> Nurse Brennigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I may disagree with some conduct, but in the end, everybody is doing their best. Alright, fair enough. Uh, oh. Alright, well, I got nothing else from Goodbye, you. Goodbye, Nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Uh, oh nice, how's the uh, the music video coming? And also thank you, appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> wait a second. Yeah, the blankets aren't moving, they're just staying stiff. <laughs> oh, that's great. I think this person's dead. They're both just like wiggling under the blanket like a worm and nothing is happening. Okay. Uh, there's so many people. Dr. Swansea is right. This place mm. seems perfect to conduct my research. <laughs> that evening, sir. Can I help you? Unless you're here to fix my face. No. I don't oh. think you can help me. I'm Dr. Reed. I've recently taken the position of head surgeon here. War injuries, am I right? You guessed right, Doctor. German shell took my pretty little mug right off. <laughs> but they still call me Thomas Elwood. <laughs> well, now I feel bad for saying something about your face. That's rough, buddy. How is your stay with us, Mr. Elwood? Oh, it's bliss. I just escaped death in the trenches to be surrounded again by the moans of the dying. Can I ask you precisely why you're a patient here? It's the pain, sir. The drugs don't work. It just hurts under the scars. If you Oof. get my drift. Can I do anything for your pain? Nurses gave me a bunch of pills. No effect. Told you. It's like the flames are under my skin, burning away. Who is treating you? It's not awful. <laughs> Someone Damn. in particular looking after your case. Nobody since the old and tired doctor spoke to me. Started to think I was forgotten about. Wouldn't blame you. You don't seem worried by that. My face hurts so much more when I smile or cry. I've learned oh. it's easier not to speak. But be assured I'm smiling inside. Oh, not that one. <laughs> Where were you stationed, sir? Did you serve for long? I really don't want to talk about all this shit. No offense. I was pushing too much. I served in France myself. 
I just wanted to know what happened to you. You were an officer, weren't you? Then I doubt we fought the same war, sir. No offense. <laughs> All right, sir. Goodbye see. for now, Mr. L. Fear and disgust on every street corner. The daily routine. Oh. Wait, hold on a second. Good evening, Mr. L. Evening, Dr. Reed. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I gotta do it. So, so what I'm doing for the evil playthrough is basically anyone that I can kill, I'm gonna kill. Uh, and I don't know how much that's gonna, like, mess this up for me, but we're gonna find out. I feel so bad for this, but, we, <laughs> but I have to. <laughs> All right, let's go. I'll put you out of your misery. Oh, that's not the right way. <laughs> backing up, backing up. <laughs> Why are we spinning the other way? <laughs> wait, can I just walk backwards with them? Will not let me. No, it doesn't look like. Wait. Okay, there we go. All right, here we go. <laughs> so this is how it ends. Farewell, my life. You betrayed me, God. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, sir, but it must be done. All right, well, there's the first one of money. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say, there's still a lot of people in here I haven't even met yet. Oh no. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, <laughs> mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> can't kill her, unfortunately. At least not yet. And why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this... Hollow shell of flesh. Please, describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. Mm. I need new blood. <laughs> uh. I see. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. <laughs> Why, yes. <laughs> I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howard? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Uh... Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the morgue. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me, for I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Mm -hmm. Sure. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hmm? 
proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. No, it was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? Tell me, Thelma, why do you feel so attached to Mr. Elwood? Why him? I'm... I I'm not sure, Doctor. I think we have a bond of some sort. We've both suffered so much. He's the only mortal I... I find interesting. Do you plan to make him a vampire too? Of course not. How could I inflict my curse on anybody else? I'm not that cruel, Doctor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would you say you and Mr. Elwood are romantically involved? No. No, Thomas is a delicate soul. <laughs> Even though he disguises it. But I am not the woman he needs. <laughs> no, for I am a vampire, Doctor. <laughs> I'll ah. leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. I wonder what your last thoughts should be. I have wasted too much energy for so little result. Ah, okay. Well, hopefully, uh... Hopefully you can get it done. Time has not this effect on me. I'm sure you got lots of stuff to go through. <laughs> um, it's locked. Damn it. Oh no, no. Help me, help me. <laughs> if only I could what actually you attack you in here. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett's, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now, eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. <laughs> Man, a lot of these seem to be mesmerized level two. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach. Hmm. Nurse Brannigan is worried about you, Doctor. <laughs> she should not have told you that. I will have a word with her. You don't have to blame her <laughs> for her <laughs> honesty. I'm not that kind of man, my dear Jonathan. Actually, Nurse Brannigan's opinion is the only one I may listen to. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. <laughs> It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. Yeah, about to make that worse. <laughs> what can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. <laughs> Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Brannigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. <laughs> Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah, yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, 
That's all I can get from you. Uh, let's see. Damn. Such high blood quality. <laughs> um, is there someone in here? No. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Good evening, nurse. Good evening, doctor. I don't think we've been introduced yet. My name is Pippa Hawkins. And I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Dr. Swansea has recently offered me a position in this hospital. Well, it's a euphemism that your help will be appreciated, doctor. <laughs> uh... <laughs> she was just looking away and then she just looked straight into the camera. Terrifying. How would you describe the situation at the Pembroke Hospital? It's serious. The flu is wreaking havoc amongst the staff and patients. We are oh. running out of everything. Nurse Hawkins, the Spanish flu won't last forever. Even the Black Plague didn't kill everyone. Well, I wish I could believe you. But what if this epidemic was worse? What if in the end, nobody was spared? You must get a hold of yourself, nurse. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. <laughs> no one has any idea when this epidemic will be over. Oh, no. Stop looking over into the camera. <laughs> How long have you been a nurse? Well, long enough to see that the epidemic is winning. And no matter how qualified you are, don't tell me you'll change that. You'd be surprised what dedication can achieve, Nurse Hawkins. In medicine, sometimes we're just a test result away from a miracle. <sighs> Sorry, Doctor. I don't want to sound bitter, but I'm just too tired to give a pep talk like Nurse Brannigan. <laughs> How is the Pembroke staff coping with the epidemic? Well, not well. Milton, the ambulance driver, is even more grumpy than usual, especially <coughs> concerning doctors. Why is Milton grumpy on a daily basis? Is it just an act? Milton's not the kind of man who's bothered about a bad reputation, whether he deserved it or not. Why does Milton dislike doctors? I don't know. Just ask him. But be warned, Milton is not the chatty type. Yeah, I could tell that from my brief interaction. Uh, oh wow, she's three. Goodbye, Miss Hawkins. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Home stouts. Good evening, Doctor. I believe we're going to be working together. Dr. Reed. Dr. Swansea informed us of your arrival, but I could not dare to believe we'd have such good fortune. Such an honor, sir. <laughs> Thank you. And you are? <laughs> I am Thoreau Strickland. Dr. Thoreau Strickland. I'm a great admirer of your work, Dr. Reed. I'm sorry, these angles just kill me. I I absolutely love that you can just, like, move this around. Oh my god, why? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay, sorry. <laughs> please, could you tell me something about yourself? I'm a great admirer of your work concerning blood transfusion, Dr. Reed. I run my own experiments. I'm convinced it's the future. What made you choose to be a doctor? I'm not ashamed to admit you and your work have inspired me. I am honored to have the opportunity to work by your side. Hmm. It's always a pleasure to share scientific and medical knowledge with someone eager to learn. I'll be glad to help you if I can. This epidemic may be the century's most terrible disaster, but I'm convinced that we, as doctors, are the only ones able to defeat it. I based my technique on my mentor's research. He helped me perfect my method. What is yours? I'd rather not talk about it. For now, it's just theories and first approach. My process is purely experimental and unsuccessful. As long as you're cautious and methodical, you may remain empty-handed, but you won't fail. You're not the first one to warn me. But I am convinced knowledge is the main weapon against the ravages of this epidemic. True. What can you tell me about the Pembroke? 
Well, it has always been an honor to work with Dr. Swansea. But with your arrival, I can't think of a better opportunity to learn about blood transfusion. You seem quite <laughs> optimistic. You, all right. <laughs> it's a rare and precious attitude in these difficult times. I'm convinced that this epidemic is a test. A test of endurance and dedication for us men of science. Questions remain about our capacity to resolve the situation. True, true. Last summer, during the first wave of the epidemic, I used to joke with Milton about the extra work. We're not smiling now. Do you need help with anything in particular? Well, yes, maybe. I'm waiting for a batch of products I ordered for my personal research, yet my supplier seems to have vanished. Do you want me to play the errand boy for you? Oh, no, <laughs> Dr. Reed. But if you went personally to his shop, what with your reputation and all, he wouldn't dare to refuse the products I need. I see. Well, give me the address, for I may pass by if I have time. Well, looks like I am an errand boy. <laughs> oh my god, he's four! <laughs> uh. Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Okay. Oh, this guy. <laughs> Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I believe we're going to be colleagues. Reed? Yes, I've been informed about your arrival. I'm Waverly Aykroyd. Welcome aboard, I suppose. Does my arrival inconvenience you in some way, Dr. Aykroyd? Let us just say that I don't particularly share Dr. Swansea's enthusiasm for hiring you. What we need here are reliable professionals, not overrated dabblers. Damn. To what you're for. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a problem with me, Dr. Ackroyd, please feel free to tell me. Dr. Swansea has imposed your presence on this hospital without asking anyone's advice. The benefit of his position. But I don't agree with it. I know we've never met before, but I believe this hospital could use all the help it can get. You will agree with that, I'm sure. Oh, but I have heard about you, Dr. Reed. Of course you can't say the same about me. Since I have not wasted my time courting the press. <laughs> the random screams in the background. What, what's going on at the bed over there? Uh, okay, um... <laughs> you are going to change your tone with me, my dear colleague. And very quickly. I don't think so. <laughs> Perhaps you think yourself protected by Dr. Swansea. But I am still a free man. And I will speak to you the way I want. <laughs> okay. Since your tenure in this hospital is longer than mine, perhaps you can tell me more about this place. Let's just say I'm tired of the carelessness around me. I have always respected the skills of Dr. Swansea, but over time his enthusiasm has become displaced. Carelessness? Exactly what are you talking about? We're here to save lives. The people who trust us are not volunteering for experimentation. They're here to be healed. I don't intend to run any radical experiments, Doctor. Even if I, as any good practitioner should, express an interest in pushing the boundaries of medical research. Modern medical methods were created through audacity and ego. But there are rules in our line of work, and they're here to protect our patients. Tell me, Waverly, what do you think of Dr. Strickland's enthusiasm for his experimental research? Strickland is playing with his patients' lives for pride and glory. Oh. Now that, sir, is unethical. Are you thinking about something in particular? Harvey Fiddick needs delicate surgery. I believe we should stick to the usual procedure. But my young colleague obviously disagrees. <laughs> and are you not afraid that your rivalry with Strickland may be blinding you? Rivalry? I guess you could call it that. But I will never be childish enough to let my personal feelings affect my judgment. Mm -hmm. Why do you wish to lead this surgery? I strongly believe that Mr. Fiddick should not be butchered to test an unproven procedure. If you are going to lead this surgery, I'm trusting you to assume the consequences of your actions, whatever the result. I'm not the kind of man who runs away from his responsibilities, Dr. Reed. There is no need for you to be looking over my shoulder. Uh... 
I don't know what you've heard about me, but I have already proved my value as a practitioner. I don't question your skills, Dr. Reed, but your motive. Is it money, fame, or are you truly dedicated? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? I served in the war just like you. But unlike you, I did not use the wounded to play the modern sorcerer. Be careful what you insinuate, Dr. Ackroyd. I only want you to admit you used those men to improve your theories. Damn. This is ridiculous. My blood transfusion technique saved many lives, and you know it. You see? That is exactly what I hate about people like you. You avoid this kind of accusation instead of facing reality. It seems you have bad memories of your military service. I refuse to see this industrial slaughter as scientific progress. War only reveals the worst in men. We can at least agree on something, Dr. <laughs> This man truly looks like he wants to murder me <laughs> in cold blood. Uh, Thank you for your time. I gotta get we'll him first <laughs> once I get to his level. Uh, this dude kind of looks like Marcus from uh, Detroit Become Human. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. No! <laughs> oh, of course. Tell me about your It's all the patients I'm just a regular that are like guy super low. Arm fixed so I can return to work and to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter, and a good one too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Are you satisfied <laughs> with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable, and your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Uh. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Ackroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. <laughs> oh, <laughs> when he put it that way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Alright, I gotta do it. <laughs> I'm so scared for the like the consequences these are gonna have for me. Thelma <laughs> uh. Howcroft said she was being watched by vampire hunters. Where <laughs> are they hiding? I should investigate. <laughs> All I wanted oh my was God. to go back to work, to take care of my children. Rip. I'm sorry. I had to. I had to. <laughs> uh, man, this is awful. It's only two. There's so many more people that I had to do this to. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Alright, I think there's only a couple more left. I don't think I can actually talk to this lady yet, though, because that door is locked. <laughs> Alright, uh, I think there's two people over here. Ah, something's going on there. <laughs> it look like flames. Uh, oh.
It's locked, all right. What's going on in here? Good evening. I'm Dr. Reed. Can I help at all? No. Really? Why are you here, then? I don't want to talk. My throat hurts too much. I suppose that this pain is the reason you're here. Is someone taking care of you? Yes. And no. Could you at least tell me your name, sir? Mortimer. Mortimer Goswick. Who? <laughs> How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. I'm sure you realize a doctor and his patient have to communicate, sir. Would it help if I gave you some paper and a pen? Not really. I see. <laughs> Then maybe it's not just your throat that hurts, Mr. Goswick. Perhaps your sore throat is just the consequence of something more hurtful. Yes, maybe. But I don't want to talk or even write about it now. How painful is your throat, Mr. Goswick? So painful I'd rather not talk at all, Doctor. <laughs> I'll let you get some rest, then. Oh, uh, all right. Wait, I don't... I'll come back. All right, yeah, I'll just wait for you to sit down. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, no, not that one. Tell there me about go. yourself, Mr. Goswick. I don't want to talk, Doctor. No! I need you I to talk, to damn it. <laughs> don't waste your time with me. Good evening, madam. <laughs> Can I help you? It's my son who needs you, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. How can I help your son? I'm Beatrice Goswick, mother of Mortimer Goswick. Could you check on him, please, Dr. Reed? I've heard much of your talents as a physician. <laughs> what can you tell me about yourself, Mrs. Goswick? Not much to say. Just take care of my Mortimer and I'll cover all the expenses. That's all that matters. Are you really that rich? Most of the patients here are of a more humble origin, if I may say so. Yes, thanks to my husband. May he rest in peace. I can cover any needed medical expenses. May I ask if you have an occupation, Mrs. Goswick? I'm a teacher by profession. I teach young women who are more ambitious about their futures than their families. Interesting. What do you think okay. of your reception here? Any complaints? I have had the uttermost reservations about this hospital since we arrived. <laughs> but we had no other choice. Considering the state of emergency. Is there something in particular that's bothering you? Some of the staff were not especially welcoming. I suspect they're not accustomed to dealing with patients of such social standing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Tell me more about your arrival at the Pembroke Hospital. What gave you such a bad first impression? The ambulance driver was quite rude, for a start. And that nurse, Miss Hawkins, seems to have quite a dubious oh, attitude. Oh, there he is. What do you mean? She managed to secure a bed for my son despite the epidemic. It was a relief, but it wasn't cheap. She charged you for a bed? Yes, and I paid without question, considering the urgency of the situation. I share your concern, Mrs. Goswick. Be sure that I'll talk to the people involved. I don't expect compensation, Dr. Reed. But I'm aware such behavior would not be tolerated in other hospitals. Okay. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> Goodbye. All right, Mrs. well. <laughs> gonna be a minute on you too. Oh well, it's just like a bunch of hearts walking around. <laughs> oh yeah. Almost forgot about you, I sir. You ended up on my plane and crawled to medical bench, sir. I understand you must be very angry about this unfair situation. What? I just I did it. Please. To in the same mass grave as your it's locked. Let me in! <laughs> uh, I'm looking right at you. <laughs> Ah, I see. Well, like, what is this? So, like, is this really where you live, man? Okay, you know what? I'll come back later. I need to go rest anyways. Uh, oh. <laughs> Runs away from the hospital. I'll just sleep in the streets. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, this way. 
Man, people are doing some weird shit around here, apparently. <laughs> This must be the place. It's definitely away from prying eyes. Hmm. Relegated oh. to the shadows. A kingdom of my own. At least I won't be sleeping in a coffin. <laughs> yeah, at least it's uh, not musty as hell in here. It's <laughs> a first. Alright, crafting. On a workbench you can craft medical treatments to heal sick citizens, serums to boost yourself, Weapon upgrades improve and customize your weapons. You first need to analyze the components you found to unlock new recipes. Click on the to analyze components. Alright. You have enough components to improve one of your weapons. Uh, weapons upgrade. You can upgrade your weapon to a new level of the required ingredients. It will inflict more damage and you will also gain access to customization slots. Uh, yes, yes. Um, let's do stun. Hell yeah. William Bishop's blood is much more unstable than human blood and shows extensive mutation. But this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. The sun is about to rise. <laughs> I can feel it. I'll continue tomorrow night. Man, I, I have, have a... so much time now. Let's see. Mmm, coagulation. Uh, I'm not so worried about those at the moment. Claws. As natural predators, vampires have received some gifts from Mother Nature, like claws instead of fingernails. These natural weapons can easily cut through tissue and are very useful for piercing a prey's arteries. If you use your claws, you will see humans differently, like soft and tender meat. Damn. <laughs> uh... Get some more health in there. Definitely need more stamina. <laughs> uh, sure. And then that one three hundred two. <laughs> Hard biting times two. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Oh. In fact, I'm already a level 8. Oh my god. Major district events. The more lives you take, the unhealthier a district becomes. If a district's health status drops below the critical threshold, it will plunge into chaos. It is for you to decide of a district's fate. <laughs> well, oh, already down to serious. Ooh. <laughs> Yikes. Well, alright, you know, we're progressing. It's cool. If I'm to stay here until my research is complete, I'd better learn to hide my true nature from the mortals. But what about my thirst for blood? <laughs> alright, we're on to part two of the quest. Night shift. I've analyzed William Bishop's blood, but the result is only partial. The blood sample was much more unstable than human blood and slow showed heavy mutation, but this is not what happened to me. I must keep on searching. I need to gather more evidences of what is happening, or what is going on. Time may be on my side, but not on London's. This epidemic is killing thousands of people. The whole city is on the verge of collapse. I am starting to believe all of this must be connected, somehow, but I can't see any pattern or plausible explanation yet. For now, I must play the doctor and try to do my best to help those who may need me while I continue my search. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see. 
Okay, well, I think this is uh, a good point to stop for today. So um, thank you to everyone for watching, and uh, if you want to see some more, I'll be back soon to uh, continue on the second part of the quest. Um, thanks again. See you guys soon.